Welcome back to What's on My Needles, and it's commission time again. I know the last one wasn't all that long ago, but I am part of a gift swap, and that's what a lot of these commissions actually are. Um, so, won't say whether or not that is what this one is, just in case these videos are posted before the product goes out. Um, but, commission time, and this time I'm working on a set it's going to be two sets of wrist warmers, one out of these colors and another one out of black, white, and probably gray. Um, so still working a little bit on the details, need to work with the client a little bit to figure out what they want exactly, but this one is going to look like a certain small 50 year old critter. And then the other one is going to look like a certain pumpkin cake. So, that's where I'm starting. I am doing a very different technique than I normally do when it comes to wrist warmers. Normally I will do a ribbed edge or so worked this way around rather than going straight up. I am doing these straight up, but instead of doing a knit one, purl one rib or some variation on that, I'm actually going to be doing brioche. Now, I'm not great at brioche, I, and I know it, but I think once you see it, you'll realize how many of your machine knit sweaters and other things from the store are actually brioche knitting. So give me a bit to get set up. I'm probably going to make the first one off camera and then come back and show the second of each pair. So be back in a minute. So this is the first glove of the first style. Um, I've decided since filming the intro that it, I'm going to separate the two gloves into two different videos. So this is the first one. So I've got the little brioche cuff. I've got the little collar of his little robe. And then I've got the color for his head. Um, so as I said in the intro, this is brioche knitting. It looks like a really, really, really cushy rib. So in general, that sounds like a great idea, but each row, each round is two separate rows. That's kind of how this works. So I'll show you how it works up in just the brown. Then when I get to the other video, I'll show you how in a, I'll show you how with two different colors and that should make it a little bit more clear of what's going on. So like all my projects, we're going to start with a cable cast on or almost all my projects. Um, so again, I just insert through the front leg of the, of the stitch, yarn right over, pull through, and twist it onto the needle. There are so many variations on this cast on that eh, I've come to the opinion that pretty much any cast on you want to use works just fine. Um, there are some that are more stable than others. So you'll notice I don't do a long tail cast on here. Um, that one is extraordinarily firm and inflexible, and because of that, it doesn't mold well to certain applications, such as stuffed animals. So you won't see me use a long tail cast on here. It also is way more prone to having miscalculations for amount of yarn that you need. So when I get enough stitches where it's kind of covering that whole needle. I'm going to move them over to the next needle. I just slip straight over rather than doing any twisting or anything like that. Then I'm going to continue to do this until I've got 30 stitches. Um, I am. This is basically going to be three rounds of what's going on just so that you've got a really good understanding. So while I'm doing this though, we're going to look 
over at the finished wrist warmer. So he is actually three pieces. Um, the collar was a separate piece, and I'll show how that worked later. But it was a different piece, and it was sewn on. Now that I've worked one, yes, I have to make the second one a complete copy. But if I was to make this commercially, so if I was to make and sell them forever, I would actually do it a slightly different way. So I would make the... Yes, this would be a separate piece, but I would make it ahead of time and um, add it a different way. Because that was added through Kitchener Stitch, which I don't mind doing, but it's not my favorite way to do things quickly. And quickly is one of the names of the game when it comes to making these to sell. The other one is consistency and while that one that way of doing it is extremely consistent it was not fast <laughs> okay so I've got my starting end I've got my working yarn and I can turn all of the cast on edge towards the center so I know it's not twisted and now it's time to just knit, right? No. So yes, I do knit the first stitch. I then bring the yarn to the front as if I'm going to purl. I slip the next stitch and yarn over. So now there's two stitches there. I'm going to knit, slip the yarn forward, slip the stitch and yarn over. So I'm not going to use correct terms in this video for what's going on because I don't know them. Um, as I said in the intro, I'm not good at brioche. Um, it is a beautiful, beautiful technique, but I am not good at it. I do not write patterns in it. Um, if I ever do, it's going to be a long time from now. Because I need way more practice reading other people's patterns and knowing what things are supposed to look like as far as the patterns are concerned. So I'm going to slowly work around. So this is actually a setup round. It's not even a true um, knitting round for brioche. But the idea is the same for the knit round. There's just an extra step. So it is effectively a knit one, purl one rib, but it's a knit one, purl one rib while doing double knitting. So it's odd, but it's really pretty. So I've got my last stitch, which was a yarn over. I've got my first stitch. Now it's time to do that second round so that every all the stitches are the same height. And the first stitch is a yarn over. And yes, that does look really odd. And it's really hard to actually work that stitch a little bit later, but that is how I'm doing it. No, I don't know if it's right. I'm going to purl through these two stitches, slip my needle in and yarn over. Purl, pass the stitch over and yarn over. Okay. So stop at the end of this needle just so you can kind of sort of see what's going on. So I've got the yarn overs every other stitch and for the purls they had the yarn over last time and those were knit together. So on the bigger one that's the purl or that's the knit that's the purl all those little strands in the middle are the yarn overs. So I'm going to continue to work on this all the way up till here and I'll show you how it finishes and I will be right back. And so, so this is the end of the ribbing or the brioche work and I'm going to go ahead and work the next, do the final row of it. And this is the row where we're getting rid of all those extra loops. So I'm going to knit two 
together and then knit one. And I'm just going to continue that pattern all the way around. Again, this is just getting rid of all those extra loops. Now, this is where I get to talk a little bit about if I was to do this design all over, if I was going to do it, if this was the prototype and I was going to make these to sell, what would I do differently? And the main thing is that after this row is the um, it's the collar of the little tunic. So this is the body of the tunic, and then here's the little collar. Now, in this one, it's done as a, as a separate piece, and it's sewn on, and I'll show you how that's done a bit later. But realistically, that's a pain in the butt. <laughs> and if I was to do this all over, I'd actually make this ahead of time and just knit it in as I go. So uh, again, I will show later how that is sewn on. But suffice to say, when I did that one, it was a royal pain. So if I was to do this again, I would pretty drastically change my process there. Um, because I don't really like doing Kitchener Stitch for that long. And it's not true Kitchener Stitch, but it's the closest thing to it. Now I'm going to work over a couple stitches. So my start of round is here. So I'm going to work over one, two, three, four stitches, and then purl all the way around, plus an overlap of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven stitches. And that gives me where to sew into. So yeah, there, there would definitely be some changes if this was going to be a permanent part of either my pattern lineup or my product lineup, just because I didn't find this as easy as I should have. So two, four, five, six, seven. So I'll be going all the way back to here on this next round. But I'm going to do the pearls. And then at, after the last pearl, and this will be midway through a row, I'm going to be switching over to the other color. So how about I get all the way through these pearls and I get right back to you. Okay. So here I am all the way around again. I'm going to make sure I don't have that yarn looped over anywhere I don't want it. I'm going to take the next um, color and simply just knit in. So there are ways to work in these ends as you go. So that is a technique that's more normal in crochet, but it also can happen in knitting. I choose not to do that, but there is a way to carry this behind and knit on top and below the yarn as you go to make sure that those ends get woven in, from kind of sort of woven in as you work. So the next part of this project is the thumb gusset. So on the original, the thumb gusset is on this side. Now, because this needs to be a matching pair, the thumb gusset will actually be on this side for the second one. So I'm going to work the beginning of round If I remember correctly, I actually need to go around one more time and then I'll do it. Um, so the reason I'm going around the one more time is that way the thumb gusset, the increases for the thumb gusset do not pull up brown yarn. So I want it to look completely green from here on out. And I'm just going to give these two an extra little tug just so that it's a bit easier. I don't have a little hole until I get back to weave them in. So 
so you may be noticing that I do tend to go a little faster when it's nice easy stitches. This is actually kind of my standard speed. Sometimes I do have to slow down if I'm working a very specific pattern, but I actually do really go this fast and I've seen people go a lot faster than this. Um, speed is not a determining factor within knitting of whether you're good or not. It's just part of how you knit. Okay, so here I am to where the thumb gusset's going. I'm going to open this up a little bit. So I did the increases going to the outside of the thumb, not going in the middle. So I am here. And actually, looking at this one more time, I need to go around one more time. So I'm coming up to where the thumb gusset is going to be. The thumb gusset is worked um, with lifted increases on the outside of the gusset, so the outer edges, rather than um, picking up in the center. So at this point, I'm going to lift the bottom stitch here and lift it up. And then knit into the stitch on the needle. Then pick up the lower of the two stitches and knit into that. Um, these are my preferred increases in general. I don't like how knit one front and back looks, and I don't look, I don't like the pick up the bar twisted or not to me, even though the hole is not as noticeable when you twist it, it's still noticeable enough that I don't like it. And yes, these increases are noticeable, but they're not noticeable as far as holes. And again, it's personal preference. It's not a requirement to use one style of increase over another. Just explaining my preference. So I'm going to continue increasing like this. It's once every three rounds for my particular gauge. And I'm going to go all the way up to probably the bind off for the thumb and I'll be back for that. So here I am back at the thumb gusset to bind it off. So I am going to bind off knit wise. So that does in my case mean knit the stitch then pull the previous stitch over. I'm going to continue that all the way across. And so this is just making the hole for the thumb. If I was going to make a full thumb, I would actually be putting these stitches over on a stitch holder. And I wouldn't have done the purl row. But since I'm just doing fingerless mittens, then I get to just do it this way. So work all the way across, work that last stitch. So I do have to bind off that last stitch and then I will continue to knit around. So the next row, I'm going to um, close up this, this hole a little bit. I'm not adding stitches in the middle. I'll show you on the next video how I do that. And then I'm going to work all the way up and bind off. So the next bit I'm actually gonna show is how to do this little collar. So give me a bit and I'll be right back. So the main body of the glove is done and now I'm starting to cast on for the little extra collar. So remember on the first one it does go all the way around with a little bit of an overlap and the same thing is going to happen on this one. So I'm just doing my standard cast on which is in fact a cable cast on or knit on cast on. They both I um, mean the same thing. It all depends on where you learn techniques from. So I will be back in just a little bit. Um, basically to show you how it sews on, the pattern is just seed stitch, so it's knit one, purl one, and then when you flip it, instead of making ribs, you're going to purl where the knits were and knit where the purls were. So I'll be back in just a little bit. Okay, so I have finished the little cuff, or the little collar and instead of knitting through that last stitch I went ahead and pulled the yarn through and I work with a very long tail when I sew 
um, pieces together. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to enter the working piece through that um, strand there. Pull up. Go over where that where the end is, so where the top of the stitch is. Pull, pull tight. Go back into that first stitch, and now is where I have to actually think. So what I'm doing is making one more line of stitching. So since this is a purl, means I'm going through the front of the stitch. I'm going to repeat the step that I did before on the next stitch. So I'm going to duplicate that purl ridge. Then I'm going to go and realize that I messed up. So this happened a lot on the first glove. And then I had forgotten exactly how frustrating it is. But as said, it happened a lot. Um, doing Kitchener stitch is hard to begin with for a lot of people. It, um, I find it just takes practice. But doing Kitchener stitch when you are doing it on a pattern stitch is really hard for most people. Okay, so I'm pulling through the back, not the front. And then again, I'm going to duplicate the stitch there and down and in. And then I'm going to go through the front to make the purl bump up and over and back through and then through the back and then so I'm going to just keep going like this all the way around until it's all the way connected at that point it will look like this just with the thumb on the other side and that will be it for this week of what's on my needles um, next time I will be showing you how to make the other set of gloves that's in this same project so see you next time.